Chapter 12, The Patronus. Harry knew that Harmony had meant well, but that didn't stop him from being angry with her. He had been the owner of the best broom in the world for a few short hours, and now, because of her interference, he didn't know whether he would ever see it again. He was positive that there was nothing wrong with the fireboat now, but what sort of state would it be in once it had been subjected to all sorts of anti-jinx tests? Ron was furious with Harmony too. As far as he was concerned, the stripping down of a brand new fireboat was nothing less than criminal damage. Harmony, who remained convinced that she had acted for the best, started avoiding the common room. Harry and Ron supposed she had taken refuge in the library and didn't try to persuade her to come back. All in all, they were glad when the rest of the school returned shortly after New Year and Gryffindor Tower became crowded and noisy again. Wood saw Harry out on the night before term started. Had a good Christmas, he said, and then without waiting for an answer, for an answer, he sat down, lowered his voice and said, I've been doing some thinking over Christmas, Harry. <laughs> after the last match, you know, if the Dementors come to the next one, I mean, we can afford you to, well, would brought off looking awkward. I'm working on it, said Harry quickly. Professor Lupin said he trained me to ward off the Dementors. He, we should be starting this week. He said he'd have time after Christmas. Ah, said Wood, his expression clearing. Well, in that case, I really didn't want to lose you a seeker, Harry. And have you ordered a new broom yet? No, said Harry. What? You'd better get a move on, you know. You can't write that shooting star against Ravenclaw. He got a fireball for Christmas, said Ron. A fireball? No, seriously? A, a real fireball? Don't get excited, Oliver, said Harry gloomily. I haven't got it anymore. It was confiscated, and he explained all about how the fireball was now being checked for jinxes. Jinxed? How could it be jinxed? Serious play, Harry said wearily. It's supposed to be after me, so McGonagall recounts he might have sent it, waving aside the information that a famous murderer was after his seeker. Should you make the much the guy at comic? Wood said, but Black couldn't have bought a fireball. He's on the run. The whole country is on the lookout for him. How could he just walk into quality Quidditch supplies and buy a broomstick? I know, said Harry, but McGonagall still wants to strip it down. Wood went pale. I go and talk to her, Harry, he promised, and make her see reason. A fireball, a real fireball on our team. She wants Gryffindor to win as much as we do and make her see sense. A fireball. <laughs> Classes started again the next day. The last thing anyone felt like doing was spending two hours on the grounds and on a raw January morning. But Hagrid had provided a bonfire full of salamanders for their enjoyment. And they spent an unusually good lesson collecting dry wood and leaves to keep the fire blazing while the flame-loving blizzards scampered up and down the crumbling white hot logs. The first divination breakmen shu ateş salamander dedikleri şey uh askaban oyununda var. Üçüncü kitabın yani Azkaban Susan'ın oyununda varlar. Hatta bir büyü yapıp onları donduruyordu. Kere o büyüyü öğreniyordu falan. Güzeldi. Öyle baka, bunları yazarsın. Azkaban Susan işte Salamander Game Bok Püsür falan yazın çıkar kesin. The first divination lesson of the new term was much less fun. Professor Tree Loney was now teaching them palmistry. Palmistry. And she lost no time in informing Harry that he had the shortest lifeline she had ever seen. It was the fans against the dark arts that Harry was keen to get to. After his conversation with Wood, he wanted to get started on his anti mentor lessons as soon as possible. As wished as soon as possible. Ah, yes, said Lupin, when Harry reminded him of his promise at the end of class. Let me see. How about eight o'clock on Thursday evening? The story of Magic Classroom should be large enough. I'll have to think carefully about how we're going to do this. We can't bring a real Dementor into the castle to practice on. 
still looks ill, doesn't he? Said Ron as they walked down the corridor, heading to dinner. What do you reckon the matter with him? There was a loud and impatient ta, ta, ta from behind them. <laughs> what does it it was Harmony who had been sitting at the feet of a suit of armor, repacking her bag, which was so full of books it wouldn't close. And what are you tutting at us for? said Ron irritably. Nothing, said Harmony in a lofty voice. Lofty ne demek bilmiyor. Heaving her bag back over her shoulder. Yes, you were, said Ron. I said, I wonder what's wrong with Lupin and you. Well, isn't it obvious? <laughs> <laughs> with, a, with a look of maddening superiority. If you don't want to tell us, don't, snapped Ron. Fine, said Herman heartily, and she marched off. <laughs> well, isn't it obvious? I should have this. She doesn't know, said Ron, staring resentfully after Hermione. She's just trying to get us to talk to her again. At eight o'clock on Thursday evening, Harry left Gryffindor Tower for the history of magic classroom. It was dark and empty when he arrived, but he lit the lamps with his wand and had waited only five minutes when Professor Lupin turned up, carrying a large packing case, which he heaved onto Professor Bince's desk. What's that, said Harry, another bogart, said Lupin, stripping off his cloak. I've been combing the castle ever since Tuesday, and very luckily, I found this one lurking inside Mr. Filch's filing cabinet. It's the nearest we'll get to a real Dementor. The Bogart will turn into a Dementor when he sees you, so we'll be able to practice on him. I can store him in my office when we're not using him. There's a cupboard under my desk here, like. Okay, said Harry. He did it. Bogart he did it. Interesting. Okay, said Harry, trying to sound as though he wasn't apprehensive at all and merely glad that Lupin had found such a good substitute for a real Dementor. So, Professor Lupin had taken out his own wand and indicated that Harry should do the same. The spell I am going to try and teach you is highly advanced magic, Harry, well beyond ordinary wizarding level. It is called the Patronus Charm. Patronus. She believes in the E. How does it work? said Harry nervously. Well, when it works correctly, it conjures up a patron, said Lupin which is a kind of anti-dementor, a guardian that acts as a shield between you and the dementor. Şimdi ilk nokta bir e, anti-dementor dedi. Anti-dementor dediği şey bütün insanlar da aynı değil ama demek ki her insanın korkuları falan, çekinceleri ya bir şekilde dementorların onlardan beslendi şeyler farklı farklı. Hepsinde farklı onun için anti-virginları var. Bu bence güzel bir nokta. A guardian that acts as a shield between you and the dementor. Harry had a sudden vision of himself crouching behind a Hagrid-sized figure holding a large club. Professor Lupin continued. The Patronus is a kind of positive force, a projection of the very things that the Dementor feeds upon. Hope, happiness, the desire to survive. But it cannot feel despair as real humans can. So the Dementors can hurt it. Bir dakika. Hope biliyoruz. Hope, happiness biliyoruz. The desire to survive. Ya bir şekilde o zaman Sirius Bey'in etkilenmemesinin sebebi direkt burada ayrıntıyı vermiş ya ben bunu şu ana kadar hiç düşünmemiştim böyle ama böyle aynen bu. Sirius Blake Peter Pettigrew'un şey olduğunu anlayası ya Ronda olduğunu anlayası ya o intikam şeyi bir patronus işlevi görmeye başlıyor. Bir patronus yapıyor oluyor aslında Sirius Blake. Evet. Doğru açıklama bu. But I must warn you, Harry, that the charm might be too advanced for you. Many qualified wizards have difficulty with it. What does a Patronus look like, said Harry curiously. Each one is unique to the wizard who conjures it. And how do you conjure it? With an incantation, which will work only if you are concentrating with all your might on a single very happy memory. Bu ilginç. Hani bu, bu böyle biraz bana şey geldi, kısıtlayıcı. Hani çok böyle iyi bir anlatılacaksın onu aşırı odaklanacaksın falan. Hani burada acaba diyorum cidden Lupin böyle olduğunu mu düşünüyor? Bence düşünmüyordur. Ama böyle anlatıyor olması ilginç. Hani belki Harry'nin yaşı küçük falan diye böyle olabildiğince basit bir şekilde anlatıyor falan. Çünkü ileride yanlış hatırlamıyorsam şey de göreceğiz. Harry bir şekilde tam olarak mutlu bir anıyı düşünmeden de iyi patronuz yapabiliyor olacak gibi bir hale geldi. Çünkü mesele mesele yani bir iyi bir anıyı çok 
canlı bir şekilde gözümüz önünde canlandırmak daha fazlası var. İşin içinde bir şey varsa eğer böyle bir bilgelik gibi bir şey. Bence olay o zaten. Bence bilge bir insan hiçbir şey düşünmek zorunda kalmadan yapabiliyor mesela. Bilge derken neyi kastediyorum? Böyle duyguları, düşünceleri, her şey böyle bir dengeye oturmuş artık sakin, huzurlu böyle kalabilen insandan kastediyorum. İnsanı kastediyorum. Evet. He cast his mind about for a happy memory. Certainly nothing that had happened to him at the Dorzizis was going to do. Finally he settled on the moment when he had first ridden a broomstick. Right, he said, trying to recall as exactly as possible the wonderful, scoring sensation of his stomach. The incantation is this, looking clear distraught, expecto patronum, expecto patronum, he repeated under his breath, expecto patronum, concentrating hard on your happy memory. Oh, yes, said he, quickly forcing his thoughts back to that first room, right, expecto patronum, no, patronum, sorry, expecto patronum, expecto patronum, something whooshed suddenly out of the end of his wand. It looked like a wisp of silvery glass. Did you see that? Said Harry excitedly. Something happened. Very good, said Lupin, smiling. Right, then, ready to, to try it on a dementor? Yes, Harry said, gripping his wand very tightly and moving into the middle of the deserted classroom. He tried to keep his mind on flying, but something else kept intruding. In a second now, he might hear his mother again, but he shouldn't think that or... He would hear her again, and he didn't want to, or did he, or did he, oy, oy, oy, or did he, işi nereye götürüyor? Harry sırf annesinin sesini duyabilecek diye böyle bir ruh emici tarafından eminmeye kadar gidecek bir kötü şeyi kabul etmeye hazıra geliyor. Bu neye geliyor? İşte erizet aynasının başında sonsuza kadar oturma geliyor. Or did he eşittir. Elizet aynısının başına sonsuza kadar otururum. Lupin grasped the lid of the packing case and pulled. A dementor rose slowly from the box. Its hooded face turned toward Harry, while glistening, scabbed hand gripping its clock. The lamps around the classroom flickered and went out. The dementor stepped from the box and started to sweep silently toward Harry, drawing a deep, rattling breath. A wave of piercing cold broke over him. Expecto patronum here ya. Expecto patronum. Expecto derken but the classroom and the dementor were dissolving. Harry was falling again through a thick white fog and, and his mother's voice was louder than ever, echoing inside his head. Not Harry, not Harry, please, I'll do anything. Aklıma şey geldi. Acaba bir şekilde hani Harry Gringotts'tan bir şeyler falan da çalacak. Böyle baya uç uç. Büyücü mekanlarında uç uç şeyler yapacak falan. Hani Harry'nin bir şekilde bir Azkaban'a, Azkaban'a gitmesini falan isterdim. Hani böyle bir o Azkaban'ı deneyimlemesini, o Azkaban'dan kaçabilmesini onunla falan. O tarz böyle bir şeylerin olmasını isterdim ama tabii ki de bir sebep yok. Kaç yaşın uşak Azkaban'a gitmesi falan çok şey gelmiyor. Her, her şey yaşasına varıyormuş gibi oluyor iş çünkü o zaman. Stand aside, stand aside girl, Harry. Harry jerked back to life. He was lying flat on his back on the floor. The classroom lamps were alight again. He didn't have to ask what had happened. Sorry, he muttered, sitting up and feeling cold sweat trickling down behind his glasses. Are you all right, said Lupin? Yes. Harry pulled himself up on one of the desks and leaned against it. Here, Lupin handed him a chocolate frog. Eat this before we try again. I didn't expect you to do it your first time. In fact, I would have been astounded if you had. It's getting worse, Harry muttered, biting off the frog's head. I could hear her louder that time, and him, Voldemort. Lupin looked paler than usual. Harry, if you don't want to continue, I will more than understand. I do, said Harry fiercely, stuffing the rest of the chocolate frog into his mouth. I've got to... What if the Dementors turn up at our magic against Raven Claw? I can't afford to fall off again. If we lose this game, we've lost the Quidditch Cup. Right then, said Lupin. You might want to select another memory, a happy memory. I mean, to concentrate on. That one doesn't seem to have been strong enough. Harry thought hard and decided his feelings when Gryffindor had won the House Championship last year. 
had definitely qualified as very happy. He gripped his wand tightly again and took up his position in the middle of the classroom. Ready, he said, looking, gripping the box lid. Ready, said Harry, trying hard to fill his head with happy thoughts about Gryffindor winning and not dark thoughts about what was going to happen when the box opened. Go, said Lupin, pulling off the lid. The room went icily cold and dark once more. The Dementor glided forward, drawing its breath. One rotting hand was extending toward Harry. Expecto Patronum, Harry yelled. Expecto Patronum, Expecto Pat... White fog obscured his senses. Big, blurred shapes were moving around him. Then came a new voice, a man's voice, shooting, panicking. Lily, take Harry and go. It's him. Go, run. I hold him off. The sounds of someone stumbling from a room, a door bursting open, a cackle of high-pitched blood. Harry, Harry, wake up. Lupin was tapping Harry hard on the face. This time it was a minute before Harry understood why he was lying on a dusty classroom floor. Ya burada düpedüz böyle yaşadığı şeylerden dolayı bayılıp bir süre baygın kalabilecek bir insanın anlayacağı bir yerleri okuyormuşuz. Ben şu ana kadar hiç böyle bakmadım buna. Yani benim de bir arkadaşım var işte. O da böyle hani arada bayılıyordu falan. Hep böyle şey oluyordum. Hani böyle insan cidden korkuyor öyle bir arkadaşı varken yanında. Sanki böyle her an ölebilirmiş falan gibi hissediyor. Şu an Harry'de de o his var büyük ihtimalle. Hani Ron Hermione buna şey şey bakıyor falan. Hani böyle Harry ölüyor mu? Bir şey mi oluyor falan gibisinde. Hani onları da hissediyor Harry. Onların o bakışlarını onların o bakışlarındaki şeyi hissediyor. Ne denir ona? O korku yani o şeyi böyle. Hani her an, her an ölebilir. Hani fazla kırılgan falan. Neyse. Anlatabildim herhalde. İyi bir his değil yani. Bir dakika boyunca dünyaya dönmüyorum. Büyük ihtimalle boş boş bakmaya devam etmiş. Et, bakmaya devam etmiş etrafım. Şu cam açmam lazım. Çok terledim. Bir dakika. Lupin was tapping Harry hard on the face. This time it was a minute before Harry understood why he was lying on a dusty classroom floor. I heard my dad, Harry mumbled. That's the first time I've ever heard him. He tried to take on Voldemort himself to give my mom time to run for it. Harry suddenly realized that there were tears on his face mingling with the sweet. Ben bu Harry'nin hiç ağladığı şeyleri şey etmemişim, algılamamışım. Beynim o ergen, beynim herhalde böyle bir erkeğin ağlamasını falan görmüyor muymuş? Neymiş? Şu an ilk defa görüyorum yani. He bent his face as low as possible, wiping them off on his robes, pretending to do up his show lace so that Lupin wouldn't see. You heard James said Lupin in a strange voice. Yeah, face to right, Harry looked up. Why? You didn't know my dad, did you? I, I did, as a matter of fact, said Lupin. We were friends at Hogwarts. Listen, Harry, perhaps we should leave it here for tonight. This charm is ridiculously advanced. I shouldn't have suggested putting you through this. No, said Harry. He got up again. I have one more go. I'm not thinking of happy enough things. That's what it is. Hang on. He wrecked his brains. A really, really happy memory. One that he could turn into a good, strong Patronus. The moment when he'd first found out he was a wizard and would be leaving the Dursleys for Hogwarts. If that wasn't a happy memory, he didn't know what was. Concentrating very hard on how he had felt when he'd Realized he'd be leaving private drive. Harry got to his feet and faced the packing case once more. Bu bence doğru seçim çünkü Harry o ana kadar hayatı boyunca dörslerde hani böyle dörslerin dışarı çıktığı evin ona kaldığı bir gün onun mutlu oldu anlar falan. Çünkü çocuk doğru düzgün mutluluk ne onu bilmiyordu falan. Hani gerçekten onu mutlu edecek bir şey gerçekten mutluluğun ne olduğunu anlayamayacağı kadar kısıtlı bir hayatın olduğun. O hayattan çıkabilme ihtimali onun gerçekten mutlu yapan şey falan desek bence doğru demiş oluyoruz. Ready said Lupin, who looked as though he were doing this against his better judgment. Concentrating hard, right, go. He pulled off the lid of the case for the third time and the Dementor rose out of it. The room felt cold and dark. Expect a patronum heri below. Burada yarı da bırakmamış demek ki oluyor bu sefer. He expecto patronum, expecto patronum. The screaming inside Harry's head had started again. Except this time, 
it sounded as though it were coming from a badly tuned radio, softer and louder and softer again. And he could still see the dementor. It had halted, and then a huge silver shadow came bursting out of the end of Harry's wand to hover between him and the dementor. And though Harry's legs felt like water, he was still on his feet, though, how for, though for how much longer, he wasn't sure. Ridiculous roared Lupin springing forward. There was a loud crack, and Harry's cloudy patronus vanished along with the dementor. He sank into a chair, feeling as exhausted as if he'd just run a mile, and felt his legs shaking. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw Professor Lupin forcing the Borgard back into the packing case with his wand. It had turned into a silvery orb again. Excellent, Lupin said, striding over to where he sat. Excellent, Harry. That was definitely a start. Can we have another go? Just one more go? Not now, said Lupin firmly. You've had enough for one night. Here. He handed Harry a large bar of Honey Duke's best chocolate. Eat the lot or Madame Pomfrey will be after my blood. Same time next week? Okay, said Harry. He took a bite of the chocolate and watched Lupin extinguishing the lamps that had rekindled with the disappearance of the Dementor. A thought had just occurred to him. Professor Lupin said, if you knew my dad, you must have known Sirius Black as well. Lupin turned very quickly. What gives you that idea, he said sharply. Nothing, I mean, I just knew they were friends at Hogwarts too. Lupin's face relaxed. Yes, I knew him, he said shortly, or I thought I did. You'd better be off, Harry, it's getting late. Harry left the classroom, walking along the corridor and around a corner, then took a tower behind a suite of armor and sank down on its plinth to finish his chocolate, wishing he had mentioned black, as Lupin was obviously not keen on the subject. Then Harry's thoughts wandered back to his mother and father. He felt drained and strangely empty, even though he was so full of chocolate. Terrible though it was to hear his parents' last moments replayed inside his head. These were the only times he had heard their voices since he was a very small child, but he'd never be able to produce a proper Patronus if he had wanted to hear his parents again. They are dead, he told himself sternly. They're dead and listening to echoes of them won't bring them back. You'd better get a grip on yourself if you want that Quidditch cup. He stood up, crammed the last bit of chocolate into his mouth, and headed back to Gryffindor Tower. Ravenclaw played Slytherin a week after the start of term. Slytherin won, though narrowly. According to Wood, this was good news for Gryffindor, who would take second place if they beat Ravenclaw too. He therefore increased the number of team practices to five a week. This meant that with Lupin's anti mentor classes, which in themselves were more draining than six Quidditch practices, he had just one night a week to do all his homework. Even so, he wasn't showing the strain nearly as much as Harmony, whose immense workload finally seemed to be getting to her. Every night, without fail, Harmony was to be seen in a corner of the common room, several tables spread with books, added messy charts, ruined dictionaries, diagrams of muggles lifting heavy objects, and file upon file of extensive notes. She barely spoke to anybody and snapped when she was interrupted. Was she doing it from Mutter to Harry one evening, as Harry sat finishing a nasty essay on undetectable poisons for Snape? Harry looked up. Hermione was barely visible behind a tottering pile of books. Doing what? Getting to all her classes, Ron said, I heard her talking to Professor Vector, that added Master Witch, this morning. They were going on about yesterday's lesson, but Hermione can't have been there, because she was with us in care of magical creatures, and Ernie Macmillan told me she's never missed a muggle studies class, but half of them are at the same time as divination, and she's never missed one of them either. Harry didn't have time to fathom the mystery of Hermione's impossible schedule at the moment. He really needed to get on with Snape's essay. Two seconds later, however, he was interrupted again, this time by Wood. Bad news, Harry. I've just been to see Professor McGonagall about the firebolt. She uh, got a bit shorter with me, told me I'd got my priorities wrong. 
seem to think I cared more about winning the cup than I do about you staying alive. Just because I told her I didn't care if it threw you off as long as you caught the sandwich first. Wood shook his head in disbelief. Honestly, the way she was yelling at me, you'd think I'd said something terrible. Cidden something terrible söylemiş oluyor herhalde. I told her I didn't care if it threw you off as long as you caught the sandwich first. Neyse, yani. Sinici yakalasın da diyor, Harry ondan sonra atabilir diyor. İki sinici yakalasın da Harry yetiyor diyor. Then I asked her how much longer she was going to keep it. He screwed up his face and imitated Professor McGonagall's severe voice. As long as it's necessary, would fun. Yapmıyoruz tam, ses hakkı da yapmıyoruz. I recall it's time you ordered a new broom, Harry. There's an order form at the back of which broom stick you call. You could get a Nimbus 2001 like Malfoy's got. I'm not buying anything, Malfoy thinks it's good, said Harry flatly. Yeah, salak mısın? January faded imperceptibly into February with no change in the bitterly cold weather. The match against Ravenclaw was drawing nearer and nearer, but Harry still hadn't ordered a new broom. He was now asking Professor McGonagall for news of the fireball after every transfiguration lesson. Ron standing hopefully at his shoulder, Hermione rushing past with her face averted. No, Potter, you can't have it back yet, Professor McGonagall told him the twelfth time this happened before he'd even opened his mouth. We've checked for most of the usual curses, but Professor Flitwick believes the brew might be carrying a hurling hex. I shall tell you once we've finished checking it. Now, please stop badgering me. To make matters even worse, Harry's anti the mental lessons were not going nearly as well as he had hoped. Several sessions on, he was able to produce an indistinct silvery shadow every time the Borgard the mentor approached him. But this patronus was too feeble to drive the mental away. All it did was hover like a sem- semi trans semi I know. Transparent cloud draining Harry of energy as he fought to keep it there. Harry felt angry with himself, guilty about his secret desire to hear his parents' voices again. You're expecting too much of yourself, said Professor Lupin sternly in their fourth week of practice. For a 13-year-old wizard, even an indistinct patronus is a huge achievement. You aren't passing out anymore, are you? I told the patronus would Charge the mentors down or something, said Harry dispiritedly. Make them disappear. The true Patronus does do that, said Lupin. But you achieved a great deal in a very short space of time. If the mentors put in an appearance at your next Quidditch match, you will be able to keep them at bay long enough to get back to the ground. You said it's harder if there are lots of them, said Harry. I have complete com- I have complete confidence in you," said Lupin, smiling. "Here, you've earned a drink, something from the three broomsticks. You won't have tried it before." He pulled two bedles out of his briefcase. "Butter beer," said Harry, without thinking. "Yeah, I like that stuff." Lupin raised an eyebrow. "Sindarjan and Nerm, show my last one, son. Oh, Ron and Harmony brought me some back from Hogsmeade," Harry lied quickly. "I see," said Lupin though he still looks slightly suspicious. Well, let's drink to a Gryffindor victory against Ravenclaw. Not that I am supposed to take sides as a teacher, he added hastily. They drank the butter beer in silence until Harry voiced something he'd been wondering for a while. What's under the mentor's hood? Professor Lupin lowered his bottle thoughtfully. Hmm. Well, the only people who really know are in no condition to tell us. You see, the Dementor lowers its hood only to use its last and worst weapon. What's that? They call it the Dementor's kiss, said Lupin, with a slightly twisted smile. It's what the Dementors do to those they wish to destroy utterly. I suppose there must be some kind of a mouth under there, because they clamp their jaws upon the mouth of the victim and, and suck out his soul. He accidentally spat out a bit of butter beer. What? They kill? Oh no, said Lupin. Much worse than that. You can exist without your soul, you know, as long as your brain and heart are still working. But you'll have no sense of self anymore. No memory, no anything. 
there's no chance at all of recovery. You'll just exist as an empty shell and your soul is gone forever, lost. Lupin drank a little more butter beer then said, it's the fate that awaits Sirius Black. It was in the Daily Prophet this morning. The ministry have given the Dementors permission to perform it if they find him. Harry sat stunned for a moment at the idea of someone having their soul sucked out through their mouth. But then he thought of Black. He deserves it, he said suddenly. You think so, said Lupin lightly. Do you really think anyone deserves that? Yes, said Harry, defiantly. For, for some things. He would have liked to have told Lupin about the conversation he'd overheard about Black in the Three Broomsticks, about Black betraying his mother and father, but it would have involved revealing that he'd gone to Hogsmeade without permission, and he knew Lupin wouldn't be very impressed by that. So he finished his bottle beer, thanked Lupin, and left the history of magic classroom. He half wished that he hadn't asked what was under the mentor's hood. The answer had been so horrible, and he was so lost in unpleasant thoughts of what it would feel like to have your soul sucked out of you that he walked headlong into Professor McGonagall halfway up the stairs. To watch where you're going, Potter. Sorry, Professor. I've just been looking for you in the Gryffindor common room. Well, here it is. We've done everything we could think of, and there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it at all. You've got a very good friend somewhere, Potter. His jaw dropped. She was holding out his fireball and it looked as magnificent as ever. I can have it back, he said weakly. Seriously? Seriously, said Professor McGonagall, and she was actually smiling. I dare say you'll need to get the feel of it before Saturday's match, won't you? And Potter, do try and win, won't you? Şimdi burada Gryffindorlu McGonagall'ı görüyoruz. Or we'll be out of the running for the eighth year in a row, as Professor Snape was kind enough to remind me only last night. Speechless, he carried the fireball back upstairs toward Gryffindor Tower. As he turned the corner, he saw Ron dashing toward him, grinning from ear to ear. She gave it to you? Excellent. Listen, can I still have a go on it tomorrow? Yeah, anything, said he. His heart lighter than it had been in a month. You know what? We should make up with Harmony. She was only trying to help. Yeah, right, said Ron. <laughs> She's in the common room now, working for a change. <laughs> they turned into the corridor to Gryffindor Tower and saw Neville Longbottom pleading with, pleading with Sir Cadogan, who seemed to be refusing him entrance. I wrote them down, Neville was saying tearfully, but I must have dropped them somewhere. And like the tail roared Sir Cadogan, then spotting Harry and Ron, would even my fine young yeoman, yeoman, come clap this loon in irons? He's trying to force entry to the chambers with him. Or oh, shut up, said Ron, as he and Harry Dreev level with Neville. I lost the passwords, Neville told them miserably. I made him tell me what passwords he was going to use this week because he keeps changing them. And now I don't know what I have done with them. Odd spodikins. <laughs> Odd spodikins. Budikin said Harry to Sir Cadogan, who looked extremely disappointed and reluctantly swung forward to let them into the common room. There was a sudden excited murmur as every head turned and the next moment Harry was surrounded by people exclaiming over his fireball. Where'd you get it, Harry? Will you let me have a go? Have you ridden it yet, Harry? Ravenclaw will have no chance. They're all on clean sweep sevens. Can I just... Can I just hold it, Harry? After 10 minutes or so, during which the firebolt was passed around and admired from every angle, the crowd dispersed and Harry and Ron had a clear view of Hermione, the only person who hadn't rushed over to them, bent over her work and carefully avoiding their eyes. Harry and Ron approached her table and at last she looked up. I got it back, said Harry, grinning at her and holding up the firebolt. See, Harmony, there wasn't anything wrong with it, said Ron. Well, there might have been, said Harmony. Bunu diyeceğini yemin ederim biliyordum. Sadece ama nasıl bir cool mu kullanacak, might mı kullanacak, perfect tense kullanmaz gibi falan düşünüyordum ama emin olmadıydım. Kullanması gerekiyormuş demek ki falan. Öyle. I mean, at least you know now that it is safe. Now that it's safe. 
Yeah, I suppose so, said Harry. I'd better put it upstairs. I'll take it, said Ron eagerly. I've got to give Scabbers his red tonic. He took the firebolt and, holding it as if it were made of glass, carried it away up the boys' staircase. Can I sit down then, he asked Harmony. I suppose so, said Harmony, moving a great stack of parchment off a chair. He looked around at the cluttered table, at the long arithmetic essay on which the ink was still glistening, at the even longer muggle studies essay, explain why muggles need electricity, and at the ruined translation Harmony was now pouring over. How are you getting through all this stuff? He asked her. Oh, well, you know, working hard, said Harmony. Close up. He saw that she looked almost as tired as Lupin. Why don't you just drop a couple of subjects? He asked, watching her lifting books as she searched for her room by dictionary. I couldn't do that, said Harmony, looking scandalized. And it must look terrible, said Harry, picking up a very complicated looking number chart. Oh no, it's wonderful, said Harmony earnestly. It's my favorite subject. It is, it's what well, exactly what was wonderful about Eritmancy, Harry never found out. At that precise moment, a strangled yell echoed down the boys' staircase. The whole common room fell silent, staring, petrified at the entrance. Then came hurried footsteps, growing louder and louder, and then Ron came leaping into view, dragging with him a bed sheet. Look, he bellowed, striding over to Harmony's table. Look, he yelled, shaking the sheets in her face. Ron, what? Scabbers, look, scabbers. Harmony was leaning away from Ron, looking utterly bewildered. Harry looked down at the sheet Ron was holding. There was something red on it, something that looked horribly like blood. Ron yelled into the stunned silence. He's gone, and you know what was on the floor? No, said Harmony in a trembling voice. Ron threw something down onto Harmony's ruined translation. Harmony and Harry leaned forward, lying on top of the weird, spiky shapes were several long ginger cat hairs. Oy, chapter 13, Gryffindor versus Ravenclaw. Evet, görüşürüz.